Um, VCMC has developed really what uh, is the county's um, premier pediatric program. And, and uh, we just thought that this would be a great opportunity for us uh, to take the chance to review some of the highlights of our pediatric program. Uh, many of you know, I came here in 1990. And uh, at that time, there was a, a, a young doctor, a young pediatrician uh, who had finished his pulmonary fellowship at uh, Stanford University, Dr. Chris Landon. Uh, and at the time, our pediatric program at BCMC was, was fairly small. Uh, we saw a few patients. We really had uh, very little in the way of specialty care. And uh, Dr. Landon began uh, developing what would become the Pediatric Diagnostics. Um, this uh, Pediatric Diagnostic Center, he started by inviting specialists up from Los Angeles. And uh, we had specialists in endocrinology and uh, actually Art Moss, who, who wrote the textbook on pediatric cardiology came up and, and those were the specialists that began seeing the patients that we serve here in Ventura County. Um, over the last 30 years, uh, that pediatric diagnostic center has become a, uh, a large center uh, that has a full spectrum of pediatric specialties. Um, we are the only pediatric pulmonary and cystic fibrosis center in Ventura County. Uh, we are the only pediatric endocrinology diabetes center. Uh, we are the only clinic offering pediatric gastroenterology uh, services and have Ventura County's only pla pediatric plastic surgery and cleft lip and palate program. Um, in addition, uh, we engaged in a partnership with Children's Hospital Los Angeles to set up County's only hematology oncology program for children. And uh, this is a program that's associated with Children's Hospital Los Angeles. Um, we're able to care for children with cancer and blood disorders here in our own county. And uh, this clinic is staffed by a physician specialist from Children's Hospital Los Angeles, Dr. Francisco Bracho, uh, who cares for these cancer patients right here in our own community. And, and no longer do children have to drive all the way to Los Angeles to get their chemotherapy. Um, in the early 2000s, uh, Stanford um, blessed us with another uh, tremendous physician. Uh, at that time, I was a young faculty member in the residency program and uh, our hospital pediatric program um, recruited Dr. Todd Flossie, who had completed his training at Stanford University uh, in the Lucille Packard Children's Hospital there. And uh, Dr. Flossie came and, and, and became our pediatric hospitalist, winning uh, teaching awards year after year uh, and, and really turning our inpatient pediatric program into uh, an outstanding, outstanding program. And I, I thought it would be fitting for Dr. Flossie to just kind of share uh, about um, our inpatient pediatric uh, services. Um, and I'll hand the, the uh, mic over to Dr. Flossie um, to, to share with you. Thank you uh, for that introduction. Uh, hopefully you're all able to hear me okay. Um, and uh, thank you for the time, Chair Parks, and board CEO Mike Powers. Um, I, I really have uh, loved my 18 years here at uh, Ventura County Medical Center. And I feel like, um, you know, this is home to me. Uh, you know, taking care of the children of this community and training the future generation of family practitioners is something that I've basically dedicated my almost entire professional career to. So uh, this is truly near and dear to me. Our inpatient pediatric unit, where I was the medical director for 17 of those years, uh, is a really special place in Ventura County and something we should all be proud of. And, and you guys in particular should be really proud of. We have 16 licensed beds. 
Um, we are the, the only CCS designated community pediatric unit in Ventura County. And I'm gonna take a second to explain that CCS is an abbreviation for California Children's Services. So California Children's Services is a subunit of the, the State Department of Public Health. And they basically have a really stringent set of standards by which they come and evaluate a hospital to determine whether or not they meet those standards to be able to care for um, the, the entire breadth of children that can become ill and require inpatient pediatric services. At any given time, about half of the kids that are hospitalized at our hospital are children that are previously well. Um, they, you know, they may have underlying asthma or, or some other you know, maybe mild problem, but for the most part, they're previously well, and then they unfortunately have an asthma exacerbation or, or some other medical problem that requires them to be hospitalized. Those kids are generally in and out of the hospital in one or two days, um, go back to their, their normal lives. But about half of the, the children that are hospitalized actually live with chronic diseases of some version or another. Um, the aforementioned subspecialists that Dr. Fankhauser mentioned are our diabetes program, our pulmonary cystic fibrosis program, our, our blood and, and uh, cancer disease program. Those kids also get hospitalized in our pediatric unit and they tend to stay for a much longer period of time because they come in already with an underlying medical problem that requires uh, a much more intense level of care. And CCS basically mandates that all everybody caring for that child uh, the physicians, the nurses, the respiratory therapists, the dietitians, the social workers, uh, the, the physical, occupational, and speech therapists all have specialized training that allows them to really care for um, the entire breadth of the, the set of kids that may end up hospitalized in our county. So something that um, we took to heart and we followed the guidelines really closely. And, and when CCS was out here, they were very impressed with that with what we had developed and gave us their designation. So uh, I continue to be really proud of that. And, and the nurses who work on our pediatric unit, um, that's really all they do. They're not nurses who are also working um, in another unit, maybe um, an OB unit or a postpartum unit. They really just focus specifically on taking care of you know, the babies, the, the young children and the adolescents, um, which is, a, you know, a, a, those of you who <laughs> have kids will know that there's a huge amount of difference between all those kid, those ages developmentally, but also just the, the way their illnesses present and how you have to approach those kids when they're in the hospital. So having uh, nurses who are really dedicated to that, um, it just makes the, the caring for those kids so much easier and my job so much easier. Um, this is a, uh, so we also have a full-time child life specialist and that's her kneeling next to this child who's about to be discharged from our um, pediatric unit, that's Caitlin. And, and it's something that really adds to the care that's provided in the hospital and uh, basically what, what Caitlin will do is um, just about anything. She's really, really good at focusing on the developmental level of the child, the understanding of the child, the procedure that might be about to be performed, whether it's just simply starting an IV to maybe going to an MRI and what, and kind of focusing and preparing the child for uh, that so that when that event happens, they are, are more prepared and just better able to handle that blood draw or that um, you know 30 or 40 minutes of flying still on an MRI scanner. Um, just a really special resource for us to have on board here at, uh, at BCMC as well. Our pediatric intensive care unit uh, is also a, a very special place. Um, started about eight years ago uh, and, and reopened recently about four years ago. It's the only PICU uh, pediatric intensive care unit in Ventura County. It's staffed by also specially trained nurses and particularly specially trained physicians. Um, we have two critical care physicians who um, the medical director is Dr. Jesse Wyatt and we recently recruited Dr. Trevor Robison. Uh, these doctors have, have done their medical school, their four years of medical school, they've done their three years of, of pediatric, basic pediatric training, and then they've gone on and spent another three years of their life just taking care of critically ill uh, children. And so these are really truly the, the specialists in conditions that are listed here, which this is all medical speak and I apologize, but these are like kids that are really, really sick and without this unit here in our um, in our county, in our community, these kids would all end up in an ambulance or a helicopter to uh, one of the critical care units in Los Angeles County or occasionally in Santa Barbara County. So, you know, if you have diabetes and it gets out of control, uh, you can end up really sick. Um, those who are, have bad infections can end up in shock. Those asthmatic kids that are really 
really unwell. Um, and, and even kids who have underlying seizure disorders or, or maybe just um, have a traumatic event and, and hit their head and then start seizing really badly, those kids can be managed here close to home in our own pediatric intensive care unit instead of taking that you know, multi-hour uh, ambulance ride or that you know, 25 minute helicopter ride uh, down to, to Los Angeles. So something really special for us. That same group of physicians, nurses, respiratory therapists who manage those critically ill children also provide a, a really great service for the county of Ventura, which is pediatric sedation. So I, I mentioned earlier, you know, an MRI, um, an MRI scan, if any of you guys have ever had one, requires you to be completely still, not moving while you're inside of a small tube that's binging and banging and making a ton of noise. And any movement basically makes the images un, uninterpretable. And so for young children or children with underlying developmental disorders, autistic children uh, who often need those type of images, um, getting them is really challenging without basically having procedural sedation. So our critical care specialist, and there's Dr. Wyatt there in a, in a, a specialty donated car um, that helps sort of prep kids and keep them occupied and happy during the, the sort of pre-sedation or pre-procedure moments. Um, along with Amy Towner and, of our Healthcare Foundation and Mora, our uh, critical care and, and pediatric nurse supervisor, They're, they basically will bring a child in who needs one of these procedures. Um, Caitlin will be able to help prepare them for it, and they'll provide some medication so that that patient is, uh, that, you know, that child is able to stay calm. Um, sometimes they're fully asleep, sometimes they're awake and just happy and can get one of these procedures done. I wanna just highlight on here, the fourth bullet point down is lumbar punctures for children with leukemia. So earlier we saw a picture of Dr. Bracho and highlighted this affiliation we have with the Children's Hospital Los Angeles. Every, every child who's diagnosed with leukemia receives chemotherapy through um, into their spine on a monthly basis for a good portion of their, of their therapy. And you can imagine that's a, a very traumatic procedure. And so to have this team to basically allow that kid to come into the hospital, uh, and, and they already often have um, longstanding IV lines. So they don't even need a poke of their IV. We access their line, give them medicine. They don't even know it's happened. They wake up happy and smiling and they've received this critical medicine to help prevent the recurrence of a leukemia in and around their, their spine or their brain. So just a really critical um, service that's being offered by our team here. And then our neonatal intensive care unit uh, has been around for well over 30 years. We have 24 licensed beds. Um, it's a beautiful unit located inside our hospital replacement wing. Um, this is a picture of, uh, of our team of um, highly specialized uh, nurses, respiratory therapists who care for these children, some of whom were born extremely premature, you know, less than a pound at, you know, 24 weeks of gestation. Some are born at term, but have medical problems at term. We're CCS designated both for the general NICU services that we provide within the, the neonatal intensive care unit, but also we're the only designated neonatal surgery program in Ventura County. Um, I, I know on the next slide, I, I highlight some of the surgeons, but Dr. Keshin and Dr. Lee are highly trained pediatric surgeons out of Boston Children's and, and uh, WashU in, in St. Louis who provide the kind of um, surgical care that you, you see really at tertiary care centers in big cities. Um, again, a couple of medical terms up here, but gastroschisis and omphalocele are medical problems where we often know ahead of time that the baby's abdominal wall didn't close and the intestinal contents are actually sitting outside. Um, we prepare for that delivery um, when the baby is born. They're, the surgeons are there. They start the process of, of fixing that. It um, doesn't always happen right at once. Um, but the kind of stuff that if these, this neonatal intensive care unit wasn't here with our surgeons, um, those babies would have to be delivered elsewhere. Um, and then congenital diaphragmatic hernia is another super rare um, but, but complicated medical problem that we can also manage here where the diaphragm, which is the muscle that separates your chest from your abdomen, doesn't completely close. And so portions of the abdominal contents like your liver or your intestines may sneak up into the chest. Um, and our, our surgeons and our team here are able to manage those patients and close that hole, put the contents where they're supposed to be, manage their lungs through the healing phase. Really impressive. We also provide cooling therapy. So if a baby does have trouble coming out and, and potentially didn't get enough blood or oxygen to their brain during delivery, um, there's a standard of care where they're, they're placed in a whole body cooling uh, to, to decrease their metabolic needs for about 72 hours. We're able to provide that here. And then we also have a banked uh, human breast milk program for those moms who want their babies to get 
breast milk, but they either don't make uh, enough or, or can't, uh, can't breastfeed. So we're able to use um, banked breast milk to provide that to those neonates as they start to, um, you know, are able to eat um, after being critically ill. And then I just wanted to, to highlight both our neonatal and pediatric surgery programs. I, I, I already kind of talked to you about the neonatal aspect of what Dr. Lee and Keshin do, but they also provide, um, you know, high level pediatric and adolescent surgical care. There's a procedure for um, children who have something called pectus excavatum, which is where their chest wall, you know, kind of caves in on itself. Uh, and it's deforming and sometimes uh, limits their exercise tolerance. And uh, Dr. Keshin and, and Lee can uh, do a minimally invasive procedure where they insert a rod into their chest and sort of reverse the curvature of the chest um, for those adolescents who are, are struggling with that problem. Uh, you know, they do all sorts of really other fancy abdominal chests, pelvic surgeries, um, pediatric surgeons kind of cover the breadth of what you might think adult, multiple adult subspecialty surgeons like urologists or ENT uh, do. They, they kind of cover everything. So it's really great to have the, them on board uh, for quite some time since even before I was here, doctors McGuire and Early have been providing um, high level pediatric subspecialty orthopedic care. And that includes uh, spinal care for those with um, scoliosis, but particularly that subgroup of kids that I talked about who, who live with chronic diseases, um, children with cerebral palsy, whose, uh, whose tendons get tight and their, and their extremities tend to cross. You can, we can do all sorts of procedures where we um, release some of the tendons or they even sometimes um, sort of medically break their bones and reset them such that they're able to walk better or, or uh, you know, get around and, and ambulate in ways that they couldn't before that. So a great team there. And then our cleft lip and palate program, which Dr. Fankhauser mentioned, it's also a CCS panel program led by Dr. Starr for many years. And we recently recruited a, a, just a, a star pediatric uh, plastic surgeon, Dr. Robin Evans, who trained up at BC Children's in Vancouver and is here working alongside Dr. Starr, um, taking care of these kids who are born either with lip or palate or both deformities um, from both birth all the way up through adolescence when they get all sorts of really impressive orthodontic procedures. Finally, I, I just wanted to sh share with you um, just, just the tremendous uh, connection that we've had with the community. Uh, we we uh, embarked on uh, really trying to create a space for the family members of these children in our hospital and um, engage with the Ronald McDonald uh, charities and, and uh, they agreed uh, to put what, what will be the largest family room in a hospital in, in our uh, Ventura County Medical Center facility. And, uh, you know, you, we had an event uh, to raise money for this where several hundred people came uh, to walk for kids. And uh, I just have to acknowledge our county CEO who is sitting in that dunk tank who, uh, who really helped us coordinate this and uh, engaged in, with enthusiasm in this project, uh, which is now coming to fruition. Uh, you can see this extraordinary space that's been created for families in our hospital, uh, the Ronald McDonald Family Room, which will be open in just over a month. And um, we also have a second uh, space, which is a quiet room for families who wanna um, catch a little respite during their time there. And, I want to acknowledge the community partners who, who really invested uh, in, in this process. Christ, Christine Petty, who, um, who contributed really in honor of her late husband, Al, who's an orthopedic surgeon, um, and then the National Charity League Juniors, who uh, re really championed this cause along with our, our local Rotary. Um, and you know, finally, I just want to acknowledge this team. Uh, you, you all met Dr. Flossie, uh, who, who is an extraordinary uh, person and has been uh, promoted to our chief medical officer position at, at the hospital. And we could not be more fortunate than to have him in that position of leadership during this COVID crisis. He's been acknowledged in many fronts for his um, tremendous leadership of our hospital through this crisis. Um, you know, it doesn't stop there. Uh, Dr. Sun Lee, who is now running our pediatric Di diagnostic center, who puts on, you know, movie nights for the children that uh, are his patients. Uh, this is, we've had to put a hold on this during COVID, but uh, plans are to, to resume this as soon as it's safe. Um, but uh, just, and, and then our, this, this, this uh, Frosty the Snowman, who, who, who uh, 
visited the kids at one of their events uh, is our own uh, pediatric hematology oncologist, uh, Dr. Francisco Bracho. Uh, you know, just last week, I was, I was kind of, you know, bragging on our pediatricians, and, and I learned uh, that um, Dr. Bobro, who's uh, one of our core hospitalists for children, uh, was out in the field uh, working with the agricultural workers, teaching them about uh, COVID, about vaccination, about protecting their children. And uh, he, he speaks fluent Spanish. And I just, you know, this is a, a person who did this on his own time. I just think that reflects the heart of our pediatric team. And then finally, you know, a, a young uh, boy who was in our hospital around Christmas time. And um, I just wanted to end with the, the, the person who really started all of this off, Dr. Chris Landon, that uh, Stanford trained pulmonologist who, who really has built this program over 30 years. And, uh, you know, on, on, on a Christmas when one of his children was in the hospital, uh, one of his patients, um, he dressed up like Santa and came and visited that child. And, and that, that's just who this team is. They're just an extraordinary group of human beings who are not only uh, the best academically, uh, but have hearts of gold. So that, that is our pediatric program at B BCMC. We're looking forward to this next chapter of, of, of a new space, uh, 16 bed space in our hospital for pediatrics um, and uh, tr tremendous appreciation for your board's support of our program. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you, Dr. Kabasi, um, Supervisor Ramirez, and then Supervisor Long. Only I just want to thank the team for doing this. And, you know, if you've ever had a child or known of, uh, children who've been sick, to know that these services are so close and available, just really think it's wonderful. Thank you, taxpayer dollars. Very well spent. Thank you. Supervisor Long. Thank you, Chair Parks. And really um, just agree with Supervisor Ramirez on this great project. I remember talking with Mike Powers in 2018 after the Prop 4 <laughs> Children's <laughs> Hospital uh, program was approved by the voters. And how could we utilize this money as best we can for our community? So to see this program come to fruition and to understand that we got this grant from the Children's Health Facility Financial Authority Board is huge. Um, I want to remind people that this, these grants go to private and public nonprofit hospitals. And you know, some people hear the word county hospital and think something, but our hospital system is amazing and serves all residents. I love sitting on the oversight committee with Supervisor LeVere and hear the great passion that our doctors have. Dr. Flossie, Dr. Frank Hauser, we heard from them today, the passion that's going on. Dr. Sun Lee, really want to appreciate Barry Zimmerman, our uh, director for the vision and getting this grant submitted because, sorry. Uh, because this hospital, our hospital, really serves all residents with a special emphasis to provide programs, uh, providing access of care to the underserved and to those facing barriers to access. And so, you know, before our supervisor uh, Bennett left, we, we said that this, this hospital system is not run on a profit. It is for the community. And this children's services is for the community. We wouldn't build it unless it was needed. If you put, you know, I have children. If I had to drive down to LA every single day to see my daughter, I would. And to have this ease and capability with the Ronald McDonald House, with all the community members coming together for our families to treat our kids here, no matter what, you know, wage or salary you have, Amazing, and it just—I really just want to say thank you. Um, it's not very often we get to do this, and it's—it's it's just very touches the heart. You know, we as the board today are doing great things. Just really support this in every fashion. So um, thank you, and I—I I know our community might not always know all the fabulous things the county is doing, but we are really getting healthcare to every single spot in our county, and this is amazing. Thank you. 
Thank you, Supervisor Long. Supervisor LeVere. Thank you. And, and thank you, Dr. Fankhauser and uh, Dr. Flossy for going into the detail you did. It's so important for the public to see uh, the extent of the services available uh, to residents here. I mean, we have world-class doctors and nurses with huge hearts. Uh, this is a world-class program and, and it's all right here locally. Uh, we are so fortunate to have this program in Ventura County and I, I love when we get the opportunity uh, to share it with the public, so thank you. And it was just wonderful to hear from Dr. Flossy too. And we hear so many good things about you, Dr. Flossy, as well as uh, the energy and commitment and dedication. Uh, we can't be more happy to have you working 